Take any programming language of the day. It has lots and lots of things in it. Even if you talk to the experts of that programming language, they might not know or they might not remember all the things at any point of time. It's just a human nature and human memory. We cannot remember each and everything all the time. And Python is not an exception to that. It has so many things, so many functions, so many permutation combinations where it is extremely difficult even for you know, advanced Python programmers to remember everything all the time. And I have seen people who were very good in Python, but they tend to forget things if they are not doing any Python programming in three, four, five, six months. Okay. So that's the precise reason I came up with a list, which will help you to remember some of the basic concepts and offerings of Python programming language. So that when you decide to write your code, even after a break from Python programming, it will be easy for you to remember things and write your code. And as a byproduct of this, this list may even help you in your Python programming interviews. But the intention of this video is not to give you interview tips. This is not for interview. The intention of this video is to give you a list which will help you to remain a decent Python programmer. So let's go ahead and see the list okay so first thing objects classes and what is the purpose of underscore underscore in it underscore underscore so python is an object oriented programming language so you must know class you must know objects and at the same time you must know how to use them but the intention behind asking you to understand objects and classes in python is to make sure that you understand that everything in python is an object even an integer float everything is an object and this is the way python programming language or whatever code you write in python will build up similarly underscore underscore in it is one particular method which you are gonna use more often than any other underscore underscore method okay so you must know about objects classes and underscore underscore in it Let's talk about the second thing. Second thing is list, tuples, dict and default dict. Okay. Now you can consider these four things as a basic data structure, which will help you to hold data in your program. Remember in all the program, you need a place to hold data, right? To keep data while you do some execution on those data. The place which is going to be used most of the time in your Python code will be list, tuples, dict or default dict. Okay. You know, list just like array, tuple just like array, but immutable dict is key value pair dictionary. Default dict is, you know, you can give default values to the dictionary and keys can be created dynamically when they are being queried. So these are the four things you will end up using maximum number of times. So make sure that you remember how to use, create some of the functions of these four data structures. There are some specific things you must also know, like how to slice your list. You know, if you want to take a portion out of the list, how to do that. There are ways to do it with for loop, but slicing is easier and it makes your code cleaner. So learn about slicing of list and at the same time, there is something which is related to, you know, dict data structure. You should also know what is the meaning of hashable, mutable and immutable. So list is mutable and tuple is immutable and all the variables like, you know, integer, float, they are immutable. Okay. And hashable means they generate a hash value and for dictionary key, only immutables can be dictionary key. So these are some basic concept you must know about it. And the good news is that if you have some difficulty in these concepts, see my video on Python programming series. The title of that playlist is interesting topics of modern Python programming. I have explained each and everything, whatever I am talking in this video, in that playlist, you can see a card over here for the playlist. Okay. Now let's talk about the third thing. Remember abstract base classes and abstract methods. 
You know, whenever you write your Python code, more often than not, in case of object-oriented programming, you need to create a template. Think about things like, you know, state machines, where you will have states, events, and transitions. So in those cases, you will have a base class for state, for event, for transitions, and these base class will allow the functionality of a state machine. You will not be able to create a state machine like functionality without using abstract base classes and abstract methods. And if you are writing any production grade Python code today, you need ABC, which is abstract base classes and abstract methods. Now let's talk about the fourth thing. The fourth thing is arcs and quarks, variable number of arguments and keyword arguments. Again, for any production grade, Python software, you will end up using arcs and quarks. No question about that. There are scenarios, there are situations where you need to use arcs, which is variable arguments in a function, as well as keyword arguments, where argument can be passed as key value pair. Okay, so remember about this fourth thing. And the fifth thing is underscore underscore slot underscore underscore. So, you know, Python is a different kind of object oriented programming language where you can add member variables dynamically after creating an object, unlike C++ and Java. Slots is what gives you a behavior, something similar to C++ and Java. And slots also make sure that your code execute fast and it also saves the memory. So if you are writing again a production grade software, and memory is of a concern for you, speed of execution is a concern for you, and at the same time, you know the object characteristic, then it's highly likely that you may end up using slots. Now, slots behave differently in inheritance, single inheritance and multiple inheritance. So, you know, pay attention to those details if you are using slots, but in a nutshell, you need to understand about slots. Let's talk about the sixth thing. Inheritance, multiple inheritance and use of super, okay? Now, unlike other programming languages, Python base class init or constructor method or init will not be called automatically. You need to call it explicitly. You will have to use super for that. And in case of multiple inheritance, the usage of super become, you know, very interesting. This is something you cannot remember and avoid multiple inheritance if it is not needed, but if you end up using it, you cannot, you know, make it work without using super. Even the single inheritance, it will be difficult to make it work without using super. So understand the concept of inheritance and multiple inheritance in terms of using super because this is how you learn the idea of inheritance in Python programming language. So this is also one thing you need to remember. And let's talk about the seventh thing, which is generators and decorators. Again, for a production grade software, there will be situation where you need to, you know, call the function in such a way where it takes less memory and, you know, you can call that function multiple times and then ask that function to execute. That is what generator does. Okay. So in generator, you can call a function multiple times. It will yield new values to you based on the logic of the function. Okay. Generators are being used widely in Python, especially in those places where you want to create the list and keep the list, it will occupy lots of memory. So you will use generators. Similarly, decorators. Decorators is not a new concept in Python. Almost all programming languages support some kind of decorator pattern. So decorator is very useful if you want to, you know, apply similar functionality to all the functions. So basically it adds some prefix and some suffix in all the function that is being executed. So it's a good idea to know about generators and decorators. So these are the seven things about which you must know. Now let's talk about couple of bonus things, which you also must know, I believe, because in today's scenario, these things makes much sense. First thing is GIL, which is global interpreter lock and multi-threading in Python. You know, this is a bit controversial topic, the multi-threading in Python, and you will find people with, you know, different opinions about multi-threading. 
irrespective of the opinions you must know about it you must know what is gil what is global interpreter lock and what it does so basically in this case at any point of time only one thread can execute in python even if you have multiple cores multiple cpus and talking about multiple cores and multiple cpus today we have multiple cores multiple cpus in all machines so it will be good idea to know about multi processing in python how multi processing is being done because sooner or later you will come to a place where you are doing some cpu intensive jobs and you have to you know take care of or make use of the multiple cores that are there in the system okay so these were the things i want all of you to remember all the time so that you know whenever you are writing python code it will help you to write better code this is a small list but this forms a crux of any python code you can go and check any production level python code and most of the time you are going to find the things which i have mentioned in this particular video so that's all i had for this particular video thank you all thanks for watching we will meet again until the next time we meet good day goodbye you take care